Welcome to Miami Dade College in Focus. I'm Giovanni Delfa. After an extensive year-long upgrade, the Museum of Art and Design at Miami Dade College has finally reopened with some incredible exhibits, including the highly anticipated Kislak Center. From pre-Columbian artifacts to designs that connect visitors with social activism, you won't want to miss these exhibits. Stay tuned for more. I'm Valentina Gonzalez. Students from MDC won Big at Miami Film Festival Cinema Slam competition earlier this year with a documentary that takes viewers on a nostalgic journey of Miami Beach. Stay with us to learn about their film and what's next for these incredible filmmakers. And I'm Luigi Mary. There's an increasing demand for bilingual professionals with the specific skill set, something that MDC's Inter-American Campus has been providing for nearly two decades. In fact, it's the only program of its kind in Florida. We have all these stories and more, so don't go anywhere, because MDC in Focus starts right now. After an extensive, year-long upgrade, the Museum of Art and Design at Miami-Dade College has reopened with a refocused vision and restored space, leaving the museum better positioned than ever to bring significant exhibitions and programs to Miami. Located within MDC's National Historic Landmark Freedom Tower in downtown Miami, this space has evolved into a museum without boundaries, using art and design to tackle social issues that are relevant to Miami. When I came to the, to the university, I heard someone saying that um, the classroom for Miami-Dade College was a city and the community. And I thought that that was a fantastic uh, mission for the museum. So we attempt to formulate a vision that really reflects those values of Miami-Dade College and also um, issues that for any art institution that really respond more compellingly to the contemporary times where we are. The inaugural exhibition, By the People, Designing a Better America, lives up to this mission. Organized by the Cooper Hewitt Smithsonian American Design Museum, the exhibit features 60 design projects that explore the challenges faced by communities across the U.S. and its bordering countries, including poverty, immigration, race, and inclusion. The curator in New York, Cynthia Smith, spent two and a half years traveling around the United States to find these projects and they're basically uh, answering her questions on how design can help Americans solve their problems. Visitors can even participate through the exhibit's design lab where they are empowered to identify Miami-centric issues and examine solutions for improving quality of life. MOAD's new initiative, Museum Without Boundaries, moves out from the walls of the institution and into the city to connect art, performance, and public programs to Miami's daily life. The program commenced in January with Living Together, an exciting cross-disciplinary series that includes thoughtful and challenging performances and exhibitions. The culminating program is an immersive eight-channel video installation titled More Sweetly Play the Dance. More than 130 feet long, the exhibit encircles the viewer in a carnivalesque look at mortality, and ultimately, becomes a celebration of resilience and life. The work of Kentridge is very much about inclusion and, and acceptance of people, of bridging um, the, 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 the things that separate us as human beings. But it also, at the end, is, uh, it's really about resilience and life and reaffirming hope for people. In addition to the museum's exhibitions, Visitors to the Freedom Tower can connect with local culture through various permanent installations. The highly anticipated Kislak Center opened in May, a permanent 2,600 square foot exhibition space showcasing extraordinary objects including rare books, maps, manuscripts, pre-Columbian artifacts, and other historic materials. So this is very exciting for us and it's exciting for the students to be able to come here and look at these objects firsthand. It's fascinating, so people can, can see the whole history of uh, Central and Latin America as it affected the states and vice versa. Made possible by a donation from the J.I. Kislak Foundation and assembled over many decades, the collection is considered one of the most important of its kind in the United States. 
The inaugural exhibition Culture and Change in the Early Americas includes Maya art, the first atlas devoted to the Americas, and a first edition of a 1493 letter written by Christopher Columbus. Just a few steps away, MDC's newly renovated Cuban Legacy Gallery presents Cuban Streams, 1855 to 1965, a multimedia installation by the Miami artist Cesar Trasovares. The installation features over 1,000 captivating and immersive photo and video projections that highlight the history of the island nation from the collection of Ramiro Fernandez. This exhibition was um, overwhelming for me personally. I've seen, since I've lived in Miami, many photographs of Cubans and Cuba. This is unique because the photographs are very, very old, some of them, and so there's five or six different images on the screen at all times. You sit on the bench and you're just lost in this world that no longer exists. It's really overwhelming. There are 1,200 images of children, of performers, famous politicians, buildings that no longer exist. And I think people are gonna really enjoy that exhibition. In addition to these exhibits, the museum will host a number of lectures and events to further the conversation and understanding of these exhibits through September. To learn more about these and upcoming exhibits and events, as well as the historic Freedom Tower, visit www.mdcmoad.org. And this is pretty much what we try to do here. <laughs> to bring more civic engagement, to help to sync Miami together, to try to see if we together can make a more powerful movement, the college, the city, the museum, all of us. There's plenty to see and experience in the museum, and this is only the beginning in an exciting lineup of events to come. Please make sure you visit soon as these exhibits will only be available for a limited time. For MDC in Focus, I'm Giovanni Delph. Start your story at MDC. Be analytical. Be imaginative. Be a rising star. Be bold. Be connected. Be the solution. Be ready. What's your story? Be the best. Be you. Be MDC. Welcome to MDC in a Flash, where we give you the latest in MDC news. I'm Elijah Pistana. MDC welcomed thousands of students for the 2018 fall term on August 27, with trailblazing programs to equip them with the knowledge and skills to succeed. MDC's eight campuses and major outreach center offer more than 300 academic pathways, leading to bachelor's degrees, associate degrees, and numerous career training certificates. Each semester, MDC expands its academic and cultural enrichment programs to meet with workforce demands, and this year is no different. This fall, MDC launched a new Digital Marketing Management Certificate designed to prepare students to prepare and execute a digital marketing plan. The certificate is designed to serve the needs of students who are presently employed in the field of marketing, as well as those interested in entering the field. The MDC School of Engineering Technology will also offer a new Associate in Science degree in IoT applications, a growing technology bound to change the way we do nearly everything. The Internet of Things, or IoT, refers to the devices such as smart home devices, smart watches, and connected cars, and are being used across many industries, from healthcare to agriculture. Graduates will acquire a skill set that leads to producing connected devices by developing applications that can run on microcontroller development boards, designing the functioning of the devices, and building physical prototypes. The new academic year also marked the opening of MDC's new state-of-the-art cybersecurity center of the Americas. The center is unlike any other in the area, with the most advanced technology to pave the way for a new generation of cybersecurity experts. Featuring a state-of-the-art cyber range, the first of its kind in the region, the hyper-realistic training platform will provide hands-on cybersecurity training 
to create the advanced security experts needed to fill the ever-increasing number of open cybersecurity positions. MDC also made history this summer with the launch of its new MDC Works Apprenticeship Program, the first of its kind at an academic institution in Florida. NBC's groundbreaking Learn and Earn Apprenticeship model is a center focused on career and technical education, facilitating internships, apprenticeships, and professional development. And for the 10th consecutive year, Mabinay College has been named among the nation's great colleges to work for by the Chronicle of Higher Education, a major higher education publication. MDC also made the honor roll once again for being recognized in multiple categories. That's been MDC in a flash, but don't go anywhere because MDC in Focus will be right back. I'm Quincy O'Brien. I'm the go-to girl at the M Network. Each of these programs has helped shape... I really have to thank MDC in Focus because if it weren't for this program, I might not have the job that I have today here at the M Network. It helped me figure out what exactly it is I want to do as a career, and I fell in love with the production industry in all aspects because of that experience I got, both in front of and behind the camera. Yeah, we're out here today on First Street Pier. Uh, this is pretty much where it all started. Topping the list of the great and famous South Beach Pier fishermen is a 20-year-old Miami-Dade Community College student, Rene De Dios. Miami-Dade College students Robert Ramos and Pedro Gomez take viewers on a nostalgic journey through Miami Beach in their short documentary, Rene De Dios and the South Beach Shark Club. Told through the eyes of local shark fishermen, the film is a coming-of-age story for the subjects and the city. This was a story that I grew up with, and it was a story that I was told by my uncles and my dad, but it was also something that I got to live, uh, going down to First Street and fishing at night on the boardwalk. It's just something that I felt like was almost like a campfire story that I was told as a kid, and it's just something I felt like would transition very well into film. The documentary was created as part of their curriculum at MDC's School of Entertainment and Design Technology. Housed at MDC's North Campus, students receive technical, theoretical, and practical hands-on experience with degrees in film, television, music business, and more. As part of the bachelor program, students spend a year producing, filming, and editing short films. There is no place that you can get this much exposure to equipment, uh, to industry techniques than at Miami-Dade College. Taking classes at Miami-Dade College, uh, part of the bachelor's program for film production, has been fantastic. Um, it's everything from pre-production to post-production. The lessons that we've been taught for permits, how to handle everything the legal way, uh, screenwriting, you know, it's, uh, they've all been invaluable tools that, you know, I highly recommend. In the spring, the students put their work to the test, submitting their film to Cinema Slam, Miami Film Festival's film school competition. Open to any student enrolled in participating in South Florida colleges and universities, Cinema Slam aims to showcase student films. The result? René de Dios took home several awards this year. Best Director, Best Writing, Best Technical Achievement, and the Grand Prize, the Cinema Slam 2018 Champion, along with the Sarah Fuller Scholarship. It felt unreal, you know, like, I, I was very confident going in, but until it actually happened, and even when it happened, like, I couldn't believe it. They deserved the awards they won. I know that our film program is the best in South Florida, and when we sweep awards at competitions like this, it just proves to me uh, that what we do is worthwhile. But the Miami Beach of 1960s is unrecognizable to the city thousands visit today. So how do you tell a story that's long relegated to memory? The fact that I found all this archival footage actually had a lot to do with, you know, making the film as well. Like that let us know that there was enough content to actually produce a film that was about something that happened, you know, 30, 40 years ago. The students discovered the footage in the Lynn and Louis II Wolfson, Florida Moving Image Archives, located at MDC's Wolfson campus an official moving image repository and archives of the state of Florida. The Wolfson Archives has over 35,000 hours of videotape and 23 million feet of film, 
making it one of the largest institutions of its kind in the United States. And they basically uh, are holding a bunch of archives of different newsreels and home videos and it's a very, very cool resource that Miami-Dade College has that allowed us to make this film. More stories depicting Florida's rich history will take center stage at next year's Miami Film Festival, thanks to a generous gift from the Lynn and Louis Wolfson II Family Foundation. The gift of $127,500 will provide general program and sponsorship support for Cinema Slam to establish several awards for the 2018 and 2020 competitions, including a category for Best Film Featuring Archival Material. Yeah, I think the fact that they're going to open up the archives for other filmmakers, it's going to make it a lot easier for people to have access and to just know that it exists. Because I feel like a lot of people don't even know that there are all these stories from old Miami and old Miami Beach that we actually have access to through these archives. The students are not done with their documentary yet and are now working to turn their short film into a feature. The reason why we're making this film into a full-length feature film is because there were just too many stories to tell that we couldn't like touch on in the short film. A lot of stories had to be cut out. Like it's, we, You could write a book on, on all the stories that these guys have of their times growing up. Alumni from SEDT are making a name for themselves in the local industry, and this duo will definitely continue that legacy, with plans to collaborate on even more projects in the future. I'm motivated for more, you know, like I, I, I feel like it's, it's not enough, we still need to prove ourselves. For MDC in Focus, I'm Valentina Gonzalez. Traveled all across my media. My name is Melissa Adan. I am an NBC6 news reporter. Finding your way around the Kendall campus is now as easy as I'm just as incredibly easy. thankful for my time over at MDC in Focus. It was really incredible some of the stories that I put together. I interviewed a blind person and it was just so powerful to hear their story and then be able to tell their story in our visual medium. So that was a huge learning experience for me as such a young journalist. I apologize for not having a PowerPoint for you, but his, his story is long and eventful. So I prefer to just talk. Across various fields, increased globalization has amplified the demand for a very specific profession, formally trained translators and interpreters, from government agencies to multinational corporations, courts, hospitals, and more need these skilled communicators. The demand is not limited to South Florida, and the need for professional translators and interpreters is growing exponentially across the country. In fact, according to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, employment of interpreters and translators is projected to grow 18% from 2016 to 2026, much faster than the average for all occupations. One thing is to speak two languages, to be able to speak two languages, and another thing is to be able to convey a message in the appropriate way and respecting the person that is speaking and the person that needs your interpretation. You need certain training and, and knowing techniques, and, and that's what you can get here. Recognizing this need, Miami-Dade College created a unique program nearly 20 years ago that remains the only one of its kind in the state of Florida, an associate in science degree in translation and interpretation. Housed at MDC's Inter-American Campus, the program gives students hands-on experience with industry standard technology and techniques, preparing them for these high-demand careers. We have the latest software that is being used in the industry right now to train translators for, these, uh, for the 21st century. They will finish with uh, tools that they need in order to get into the labor market. But you will complete the sentence in English because then you will be interpreted from Spanish. The curriculum prepares Spanish, English, bilingual students to work as translators or interpreters. Interpreters must capture spoken words accurately and without delay while translators work with the written word and are trained in computer-assisted translation. Now there's a lot of uh, market in, in the translation of web pages, the translation of software. So it's all uh, digital translation, what they will do. And, and interpreters deal with the spoken language. Interpreters are the one that will interpret uh, in court, will interpret in conferences, international conferences, simultaneous interpretation 
and will also interpret in medical settings, um, will also interpret for business meetings, um, everything that, it, that relates to uh, the spoken language. No creo sino que la violencia genera more violence. Taught by experienced faculty, students learn the minutia of language, including terminology specific to various fields, such as medical, financial, and legal translation. You're working with a professor who's quite experienced, who gives you a lot of tips, and then you're actually doing interpretations of mock trials. So you're getting all the terms, everything that they use in there, and you're actually just being exposed to it 100%. This fall, the program launched a new college credit certificate in translation and interpretation, providing an even faster pathway to employment for eager students. The 18 credit certificate can be completed in one year and can be stacked into the associate's degree at a later date if students wish to continue their studies. The degree program prepares graduates for the industry certification exams necessary for employment in various fields. Many of MDC's graduates find employment in the court system, agencies, and even freelance. In the state of Florida, MDC's alumni account for 15 of the 270 state-certified interpreters. I would recommend this program to people who love um, languages and who would, who would like to develop their language skills as a person and later as a translator or interpreter. I would definitely recommend this program to other students because here in Miami there are not a lot of opportunities like this one and here at Miami Dade College we have a, a, a great opportunity to, to pursue this career. For MDC and Focus, I'm Luigi Mary.